So hello YouTube, it's Accurate again, back with another video from the home studio. Now, I still got a few days off from my normal day job because of the winter holidays and I thought I want to make a beat making video. And I also stumbled upon this really amazing sample that I think can become something great if I just chop it up and make the beat out of it that I can pretty much hear in my head right now. So without any further ado, let's open up machine and see where I can take this one. Let's go. Accurate Beats. Accurate beats. Now this sample is a soul track from the 70s that I got from tracklib.com, an awesome service by the way, and the sample sounds like this. But I found a part later in the song that feels more suitable for sampling. Yeah, pretty much over here. So I think that's gonna be my first chop right there on the U. There somewhere and I'm gonna set my choke group to one and the polyphony of the sample to legato. Now let's look for even more slice points on the sample. So let's just duplicate it over to my next pad and go from there. Yeah, so I think I've reached some kind of starting point here where I'm kind of happy with the different slices that I've found. And my next step here will be to try to find some kind of pattern to play the slices in and create something new from that. So let's give that a try. So let's pitch the entire thing up a few semitones. Maybe not that much, let's go down a few semitones again. Well, okay, it really feels like I need some drums here to begin with, so let's open up a new group and open one of the presets from one of my machine expansions I have here. Or maybe this one. No, never mind, let's go into our samples again. And load this one in here and have a listen. And the process is kind of similar to when I chopped the sample up. And now it's time to isolate the different drums. So I want the snare on pad two. And there we are with the snare, but with some hi-hats. So let's shorten the sample so I just have one. And this is something I get questions about from time to time. How do I remove stuff like this? And in this case, it's just a matter of setting my start and end points right before and right after the hi-hat sound. Zoom in to see a little bit better. So that right there is pretty much the thing I want to remove from the sample, right? So I just go to the cut tool. I apply, which means I cut it. So let's zoom out and have a listen to the snare. Without the hi-hat, simple as that. So let's duplicate this pad and do the opposite. Just take the hi-hat. And there we have it, a kick, a snare and a hi-hat. Now let's do some quick edits to them. The hi-hat definitely needs a high pass filter. That's not perfect, but let's keep it for now and go to the snare. So let's first edit the sample itself by just a fade out right there. And still keep the transient. So that's a little bit cleaner, but let's add the transient master inside of the machine. And let's increase the attack. Maybe add a little bit of sustain as well. That's good. And on the kick drum, let's add a transient master there as well. And then an equalizer to take some of the high frequencies out and maybe boost some of the lower frequencies. Yeah, something like that. And I'm kind of ready to record a drum loop here, so I'm going to set my tempo in the sequencer to something around 90 BPM and then see if I can record four bars of drums. Again, definitely good enough for this. Now let's go over to the sample again and see if I can find a pattern that fits together with the drums. That might be a little bit easier. Yeah. 
So with the sample at this pitch, I think a pattern like this could kind of work. So let's give it a try and record something like that. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. Maybe it's a little bit too choppy, but I think that's gonna be okay when I put more energy in the drums and I add a bass line and so on. And now when I'm already doing this, why not just go to another scene and take the same drums, duplicate it to another pattern, and try to come up with a secondary pattern of the samples, which can act as a, as a B part on, on the track. So something like, Yeah, that's kind of a start, but now I feel like I should go in here and edit my velocity settings on the different notes. So let's first of all take this one, like so. The same thing here, let's just lower the ones in the middle. And let's put this one in the middle on a lower velocity, so it becomes something like... Well, I think that's okay, let's play the first pattern followed by the second one. So yeah, that's actually kind of exactly what I was going for. So just by copying a few notes and adjusting the velocity setting on them, I kind of created this delay effect, but I'm in control over what's happening. So I really like that. But now let's go back to my first scene again and add a bass line. Here I have a couple of different options. And the first one would be to just filter the bass from the sample and use that on top of the sample, so to speak. Let's try that first. So I'm gonna duplicate my group together with my events and my patterns. I want to add a filter on the group level, play it in solo. So there we have something. And that could be my baseline on top of the normal sample and it would sound something like... And for some samples, this technique is awesome. And this is kind of an old school way to work when it comes to creating bass lines. But I already think the sample is a bit too busy and choppy and then using a bass line like this makes it even more chaotic. So I'm gonna try to open up an instrument instead and play a bass line on top of the sample and the drums. So let's delete that and open up an instrument. One of my favorite sub basses. Now I just need to find a root note that goes together with the sample, so let's do that. Let's try something with a higher pitch to see if it's actually easier to find a note like that. Well, I don't hate that, so let's try to record it and see how it fits into the sequence. That sounds just fine to my ears right now. So let's go to my other scene and see if I can do kind of the same there. Yeah, it's still a little bit messy, the whole thing, but I guess I should kind of simplify the pattern on the first scene here, how the samples are playing over the drums and do kind of exactly the same thing, but try to simplify it a little bit. Well, maybe I didn't simplify anything, but I think I like this pattern a little bit more. I just need to edit this note right here and make the velocity a little bit less loud. Yeah, this is a little bit better. Well, so far I'm kind of happy with the sample and the chops and the two different patterns I have there, plus the drums and the bass line. So that's where we are right now.
And I want to clean up the mix a little bit, so I'm going to go into the first group with the sample and put a high pass filter and just take out some of the bass in the sample. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just taking out the really low frequencies of the sample so it doesn't interfere with the bass line that I played. Next up I want to add some kind of delay or a reverb or something. Yeah, that little amount of metaverb right there just makes the entire sample flow a little bit better to my ears. So I'm happy with that. What I'm the least happy with right now is actually the sound of the drums. Maybe I want to replace the drum sounds with something from the MPC Live over here. Well, I kind of like these ones. So let's sample the sounds from the MPC to machine and sequence it that way. So let's go to a new group over here and enter the sampling mode. And I have a signal, so let's start the recording. Go back over here and hit the sounds. Edit, normalize, and here we are. I like that kick. I like the snare. I kind of like that hi-hat, but I like that one even more. And that would sound something like... I want to copy the pattern from that group and then paste it into this one. Yeah, I think I like that. So the first drum kit sounds like... All right, and then the other one. And both of them together. Yeah, and with everything going on at once. And on the second pattern, it behaves like this. Yeah, I actually really like how this sounds and what happened here. Sometimes layering drum sounds like this is a really good idea. And by now I'm at a point where I'm pretty much happy with the track and I don't feel like I have to add any more stuff to it, except from scratching, of course. But before we get to that, I want to say to everyone who's actually made it this far into the video that this also contains one of the giveaways that I'm doing with Native Instruments from time to time. The software products that I'm giving away in this video are listed right here. And everything you have to do to have a chance to win is to leave a comment in this video containing the word kindness in some way. When I release this track as an instrumental on Spotify and Bandcamp and everything like that, the track is going to be called Kindness. So I want you to include the word kindness just to give me the signal that you've actually been this far into the video. And then I'll pick a random winner with the word kindness in it and you'll win this stuff. Now I also want to say that even though this video isn't sponsored by anyone, I'm using two different samples from a service called Tracklib that I mentioned in the video. Because I get questions from time to time about how I get away with using samples and how I clear them and everything like that. And Tracklib is kind of the way to go right now. They have this website where you can go in and actually download a sample, some real music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. That way you can have the sample and start using it and make a beat out of it. And then when you want to release that beat and start making some money off it, you also have the possibility to buy a license from Tracklib and clear that sample right away. Then you'll have to pay a percentage of what you make of the track back to Tracklib for them to basically pay the record label who owns the rights to the original music that you used. But the really nice thing is that I don't have to talk to record labels and talk about ownerships and, and rights to samples or anything like that. Everything is handled by Tracklib that way. So it's kind of a nice way to work. Again, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not getting paid by Tracklib. I'm just using their service to clear my samples. So now I'm just gonna shut up and start scratching instead. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Hare gut.